it's not a walkthrough, playthrough, review, anything like that. It's just me playing the game badly, so you can see what it looks like. Okay then, this is Cubert on the ColecoVision level one, apparently. Come on, get on with it. That's not me doing that. I played ColecoVision on the Atari 2600 and in the arcade, and, oh you bugger off, I like it, I am very fond of this game. Ah, oh, yeah, he said it, he totally said it. There is a strategy to playing this game that I am unaware of, and... Oh, you bugger. Yeah, that's the strategy. I, I'm not... It's not something I can do, like, on demand, but... You can get the snake to jump after you while you're on the disc. This plays a lot better than the 2600 version. And that's good. I mean, I... Oh, crap. I quite like that version, but this this beats it, and it it's responsive to the controller. You don't have to think: should I have this diagonally or not? It just it just works, and that's very pleasing. You can play it without thinking: am I doing this right? Yay! Nah. Oh, you burk. What was I saying about it just works and you don't have to think about it? Not always true. Engage brain at the start. What the... Oh, okay, it's that funny geezer who... Oh, God. Yeah, they walk up the sides of your cubes. You don't want to meet them. Snaky bastard. Uh, come get me. Yeah. Yeah, that got rid of one of them. Oh, oh, oh god. And there's no, no discs. Ass. This game is perfect for me in terms of language. Yay! What do we got now? Disc up there seems like oddly positioned. I mean, will it? Oh crap! Oh bollocks! <laughs> Game over. Okay, I like that. That is that's a good version. Cuba on the Coleca Vision. Good fun. Thank you for watching. Hello, today's question for Q&A is from What's On My Shelf, link to his channel down there. He asks, for Q&A, do you get enjoyment out of retro racing sims, particularly in the racing sim genre where hyperbole or hyper reviewers lord accurate models of, and I've, here we go, of physics and objects in the world with each release of big title games. Any small studio is attempting these games. The licensing fees must be horrendously expensive. However, in retrospect, the physics models become more inaccurate, looking back further and further to the point where it becomes laughable. In contrast, the amount of fun may not depreciate, as you are able to play with these physics to excel in a game and produce or produce impossible results with such Hilarity. Okay, I get what you're saying. Um, do I like the old Sims where the physics is a bit dodgy, but that can make it more fun? Uh, short answer, yes. Um, I've not played a lot of old racing Sims. Uh, really only two come to mind. No, three. Maybe more. Um, I'll have to think about that. 
Formula One Grand Prix by Jeff Crammond, obviously. On the Amiga, haven't played it on PC. Um, Stunt Car Racer, obviously. Um, also uh, Indianapolis 500, I've played that. And then of course there's games like Hard Driving, I like that as well. Um, and what's that thing on the on the snares? Um, Super FX chip, Stunt Race FX, I like that. Basically, flat shaded polygon racers, yes, I like them a lot. Virtual Racing, does that come into that? Um, in terms of the physics being laughable, or at least limited, I can't think of many examples where that has played into the way it plays. Obviously, Stunt Car Racer, yeah, you're like airborne and doing crazy stuff that would just destroy a car. That's intended in the game. Um, and it does make it fun. The thing that comes to my mind is on um, Jeff Crammond's Formula One Grand Prix, I'm reminded of a race that I played with friends many, many years ago. Uh, I had these two friends who used to go around to my flat and we would play Formula One, and it had this um, multiplayer mode where y you would do a, a number of laps and then the computer would take control of your car and you would hand the joystick over to one of the other players and they would do their laps and then so on. Um, and that would allow like three or, four, or however many of you to play a multiplayer game without having to rely on split screen or, you know, and you could play the whole game with one joystick. And this is what we did. And we would have individual setups for each circuit. And really, we would tweak the hell out of the cars. And, and because both friends had Amigas, so they would practice at their houses get their setups right and everything and then put it onto floppy disk, bring them round to my place because I had the more powerful Amiga and a flat where no one was going to be disturbed while we were playing until stupid o'clock in the morning and we really did. It's like we'd start playing at seven or eight in the evening and we would still be there at four or five o'clock the next morning. So I'm just reminded of this one occasion where I, were we racing in Hungary? It was a tight circuit, or relatively tight. There was one significant straight, but most of the circuit was quite tight. And the standard setup, and the kind of setup that your typical player would go for, was a kind of middle of the road, medium kind of gearing, medium downforce. So they could take advantage of the, the, the straights, but still get round the twisty bits. I did something different and what I did was extreme. I went for maximum downforce and really low gearing, stupidly insanely low gearing. Um, and it meant that my car could grip like anything in the corners and accelerate like a crazy thing. It wasn't easy to control because you were blipping through the gears like just half a second per gear and, and it was great. I could just romp away into the front of the field and then get to the main straight and the other cars would be catching up, up with me really quickly but I would still just about be holding the lead. Basically I could get past the finishing line in front and if I had been able to do the whole race without having to hand over to the computer, I would have walked it. I would have just absolutely slaughtered the opposition. But, while I was able to drive this car really, really well, and insanely fast, the computer couldn't. <laughs> the computer driver, when it was driving, its AI was at best average. Whenever you hand it over, you knew you were going to lose a place or two, whatever your car set up. But every time I handed over to the computer to let one of my friends have their go, I would go from the front of the field to the back of the field in a matter of a lap. It was that bad. It did not know how to drive my car. Um, it's like it, it, it would select a gear, rev the knackers off it, leave it on the red line for ages, and then finally decide, oh, look, maybe I should change gear. 
at a point where you would normally change gear in a normally geared car, it, it wasn't it didn't seem to be choosing when to change gear based on the revs, it seemed to be based on how long it had been in that gear, which was stupid. But yeah, um, I didn't win that race and I should have, I was last, because stupid AI. I could, If I had been the last player to have their go at the end of the race, I would have won, but I wasn't, and because I wasn't, I came last. Um, which isn't really about dodgy physics and what not making the game fun. It, it's about gaming the game, if you like, um, doing something unusual with it and putting it to my advantage, except the AI let me down. That one always comes to mind. But yeah, I do like those kind of games. Um, modern games are lacking that... They're very, very real world, and sometimes you want something that's not quite so real world. Um, but that being the case, I find just playing the old games, you know, I'm not going to look for a modern game that does that. I'll just play the old game, because why not? I like flat-shaded polygons, and those kind of games tend to be like that. Hmm. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Uh, as I always say, if you've got a question you would like answering in a video like this, just leave your question in the comments below. Begin your question with four Q and A, so I know not to just answer it in the comments. And thank you for watching. Not without a knighthood, not a chance. Anyway, Benway who? Oh, you lot. Uh, hello. Uh, what? Oh, please subscribe. Thank you. Can I go now?